Hey guys, Brian from Brian Bowers here. Well, I've reached a milestone in the 2022 breeding season. My breeding trials are officially over and I've separated all my males and females. So hopefully I have quite a few gravid females on the ground and I'm really excited about the possibilities that lie ahead in the next few months. I've even had a couple litters in the last couple weeks, which I wanna update you guys on. So be sure to stay tuned for that. So if you've been following my 2022 breeding season so far, you know that I paired animals up all the way back in November. So these animals have been together for over six months in some cases. And so pretty much this is about where I draw the line. So obviously you have to keep your animals together quite a long time to assure that you have the best possibility of success. But if it doesn't happen after a certain point, it's probably not going to happen this year. Um, the other thing is that you really need to separate the animals so that you can get them in shape for possible breeding the following year. So the animals that have been paired up, they've only been fed about once every month or so. So they've lost some weight, especially the males. And the males put a lot of energy into courting the females, even if they're not successful. So you really have to get that body mass back on your animals prior to setting them up again. And so at this point, I have a pretty good feeling on a lot of my pairings. I mean, some of the females are obviously gravid. Doesn't mean that there's, you know, viable babies, but at least, you know, there's a shot at a, at a nice litter in, in most of the cases. And I would say roughly about half of the animals, the females I paired up are now obviously gravid. And now it's just a waiting game. I'm expecting litters to drop anywhere from, you know, tomorrow, all the way out to probably September-ish, maybe even October, depending on uh, you know what develops. But I would say of the remaining, you know, 50% or so, about half of those or a quarter of the total pairings, there's a possibility. I mean, I'm seeing some signs that the female might be gravid. I'm just not entirely sure. Just have to wait and see. And then the other, you know, 25% or so, I would say it's just not gonna happen. And, I don't know why. I mean, some animals you think are ready to go and they look beautiful, beautiful shape. You know, you would think that they were compatible, but for whatever reason, they just don't take. You know, either they're not in the mood or they're not a compatible pair. Um, the male doesn't like the female or vice versa. Just doesn't happen. And you know, one of the pairings, unfortunately, was my Northern Brazil uh, BCC True Red Tail. Like, this is my female. I really would like to breed these guys. I don't have too many of these animals and they're very rare. Um, so it's obviously a priority of me to breed animals that are, you know, in short supply that, you know, everybody wants. And I know every, you guys all want these animals. You know, if I could just wave a magic wand and, you know, clone a thousand of them, that'd be great. But unfortunately it doesn't work that way. So I am not going to have uh, any um, Northern Brazil or red tails this year, unfortunately. And so usually I try to mix it up, you know, the following year. If I have a pair that doesn't work out, often I can, you know, swap the mates and, you know, put in a different male or, you know, the male with a different female. Um, with the North Brazils, I actually have two pairs. So luckily I have another female that I can pair up. Um, I actually tried both of my males with this girl. You know, sometimes I tried them at, you know, by themselves. I even tried a, a trio at one point for quite a while. Um, I don't know, they just, they looked like they were all just in the friend zone. Like the three of them were just hanging out and chilling. And, you know, sometimes I saw the two males together, you know, who knows, maybe they're gay, I don't know. But um, anyway, this female is obviously not gravid. Beautiful, beautiful animal. Just love this, you know, gorgeous animal. Just wish she would have some babies so that we could, you know, share the wealth and get some of these beautiful North Brazil BCC out to you guys who really want them so badly. So hopefully my female will, my other female will take next year with um, one of the males. But I'll just have to see. And, you know, every year I do things all differently. I try to mix it up based on what I learned the previous year. This year, um, I actually started my pairings about three to four weeks earlier than I normally do. And, you know, hopefully that made a difference. I had my, my earliest litter was on the ground. Uh, actually, the end of March, my Pearl Island boas were born, which was really early. And, you know, I actually do have some litters which have 
dropped already, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But yeah, so it does. It looks like pairing up a little earlier led me to having my litters a little earlier, and hopefully I will have a higher success rate this year because I did the pairing a little earlier. But we'll just have to see what the final numbers are. Another one of my pairings, which unfortunately wasn't successful, is my uh, Bolivian Boa Constrictor Amorali. This is a Orange Crush bloodline, ter Joe Terry bloodline. And these animals, this was the first time I paired them up. And sometimes I just don't have luck the first time I pair up a new pair. Um, in fact, I have several pairs this year which appear to have been successful, which didn't take when I tried them the previous year. So maybe they, these guys just need another chance and they just need to try again. Um, this is a pair that unfortunately there's not much I can do as far as mixing it up because these are the only Amorali that I have. And these animals are just really super hard to get, these orange crush animals. Um, you know, I, if I had a blank check and I went out and, you know, waved it in the air at a reptile show and said, you know, I want a pair of orange crush Bolivian Amorali, you can have this blank check, write it out for a million dollars, whatever, I probably couldn't get any. So that's how hard some of these locality boas are to get. So I don't know. I mean, I'll maybe mix things up as far as the cycling or, um, you know, the cage or something. Maybe I'll have some kind of insight by, you know, the next breeding season that will hopefully lead me to be successful with these animals. Unfortunately, I just simply can't add a different male or female because I don't have one and I can't get one. So who knows? I mean, I guess I should be happy that a lot of my animals do breed successfully. Sometimes you just can't have them, you know, all breed for you. You know, you just have to try your best and maybe next year, you know, you'll have better luck. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I've had a couple litters drop in the last week or so. And one was good, one was not so good. And so unfortunately, with even with gravid females, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have healthy, viable babies. Um, you know, it's just sometimes it just doesn't work out. And I had a pairing that didn't work out involved this guy. This is my VPI T positive uh, albino male. And so I had him paired up with my Moran Hypo Jungle female. And so this was one of two morph pairings I have this year. First year pairing up morph bow as he's just trying to get up to the rafters, as you can probably tell. But my plans with this pairing, I wanted to create a VPI Moran. So it was really, a, it's a two-step cross because I have to get the heads first. And so this was step one, and hopefully the babies, I would have some Hypomoron jungles hat for VPIT positive, which I could then cross to each other and generate the VPIT positive Moron boas. And so I paired this guy up, and he really didn't show much interest in my female, and I really didn't see much in terms of courtship. I didn't see any tail wrapping or, you know, obviously no obvious signs of copulation. But then strangely, the female started acting very gravid. And this was only after they were paired up for a couple months. Uh, she had her post ovulation shed, started to coil over the heat spot and started to swell, you know, like she was gravid. Um, so anyway, I maintained her and um, she was actually due, I believe next week. She, you know, delivered a little early. There were 12 or 13 slugs and two or three underdeveloped embryos so these look like they were fertilized they were viable embryos but they were not nearly developed enough to be viable um, so i'm not exactly sure what happened i think maybe the female ovulated before the male had really bred with her very much and so there really wasn't a lot of sperm on board to fertilize those eggs there was enough to fertilize two or three of them so you know we know that they're probably was a contribution from the male other than the possibility that those are parthenogenic uh, babies, but, or, you know, embryos, but that's pretty unlikely. So I think that male did get, you know, some action. He just, you know, didn't really finish the job. That's probably my best guess. Um, maybe if she had held on to them for another few weeks, some of those partially developed babies would have been viable, but who knows? It just, you know, it wasn't fated to happen, unfortunately. The 
positive sign is is the female's fine so she delivered everything there's no signs that she retained anything and she's completely healthy now she's you know fed and looks like she's going to be able to get back in shape for breeding you know a couple years in the future so that's really what matters but you know it was a bummer especially since you know now as far as this vpm moran project i'm gonna to have to wait at least another two years to get hats and then I have to ask myself, do I really want to try this male with that female again and, you know, possibly have it go bad again? Um, I have plans for this male for a different VPI female this year or, you know, 2023 breeding season. But now I got to wonder, you know, maybe he's just not up to the job. I don't know. Maybe it was just that female. Maybe he just didn't like it for whatever reason. Um, who knows? It's always a guessing game when you're pairing up these boas. And I don't have a whole lot of morph boas. I actually only have three male morph breeders that I can use in my morph projects. You know, if it was a Suriname project, I've got like, you know, oodles of Suriname boas that I can pair up. You know, same with like Peruvians and a lot of the dwarf boas. It's, it's great when you've been breeding for a few years and you've acquired all these nice holdbacks and you just have this great assortment of animals to choose from for your pairings. But with these morph boas, you know, since I'm relatively early in my morph projects, I don't have any holdbacks at this point. So anyway, we'll just have to see what happens. Um, you know, the, the important thing is, is both of these animals are fine. And, you know, worst case scenario, of course, is when a female dies due to complications of, you know, retained embryos or retained slugs or something like that. And that's just really, really sucks. Um, so as long as your females make it through okay, you know, it's, it's crappy to get all slugs, but it happens sometimes. And I've actually never had a litter that was just completely slugs like this. So this is a first for me. I've had some litters that were largely slugs, you know, 80% slugs, but there were always a few liable offspring. So, you know, there's always a first, and maybe I'm lucky that I've gone this long without having a total slug out like this. Now on to the successful litter. This is my first Suriname litter of 2022. And in fact, it was my earliest Suriname litter ever, born in the last week of May. So maybe there is something to this pairing up uh, about a month earlier you know to lead to earlier babies it just kind of makes sense so this was a litter that was um, an f2 litter from two holdback animals both born here this is the father this is a 2016 prometheus bloodline male so just a gorgeous animal looks just like his uh, more famous father and he was paired up with a really nice female from my other bloodline also born in 2016. This is the first litter for both of them. So the litter was uh, dropped about a week or so uh, before the due date as predicted by the post ovulation shed. So it was a little bit early, a little bit unexpected. And it wasn't a huge litter. So it was a total of five live, one stillborn, and there were three slugs. So um, first litters often aren't that big so you know it's not surprising that it wasn't a huge litter um it's always great to have big litters i'm not going to lie but these are really high quality animals so you know i think i have some really beautiful animals that look a lot like their father here and just have these beautiful peak saddles and hopefully they're going to have long red tails and just you know gorgeous looking animal you can see he kind of embodies what i call the dirty look he's got lots of background markings and smudges and speckling and things like that. Uh, not a clean look. I know some people are breeding more for the clean look, um, which looks nice in some animals. I kind of like the dirty look in a lot of animals. You know, if I saw a boa constrictor in the rainforests in South America, I would expect it to look more like this, kind of more of a dirty look than these really, you know, sterile, washed out looking clean boas. But you know, those clean boas are nice too, so I'm not trying to disparage anyone. So when the litter dropped, I was kind of in the middle of a bunch of stuff and I didn't have time to film it. Usually, or at least in the past breeding seasons, I filmed me taking out the babies and checking them out. Um, it was just really too busy and I just had to kind of get the female cleaned up and get the baby set up and had some appointments. So I didn't get to film anything. Um, the babies right now are about a week old and I recently separated them into their own separate tubs they should shed in the next day or two I'm guessing 
and then once they shed I'll have a better idea of their coloration and their potential. Uh, I plan to do an update video and I can show you guys some close-ups of the babies in the update video but I'll do this once they shed. And so once they shed it'll be time to try to feed them, get them established and hopefully they'll be on to their new homes in the next couple months. So this should be you know, some of my earliest available Surinams, uh, I'm guessing they'll probably be ready to go sometime in July, so depending on how they do. But I expect they'll be ready earlier than I normally have Surinam babies available to ship. Um, so this year, as I've mentioned, I have quite a few gravid females on the ground, including several different types of true red tails, several types of the dwarf boas, uh, at least you know, one other potential morph pairing, and then a few other you know, assorted uh, locality boas. So it should be a pretty exciting next few months ahead. And I'm carefully checking my calendar, keeping track of when my animals had their post ovulation shed and when I expect the babies to be born. There's a couple females that are either just, you know, a couple days past the due date or the due date is in a day or two. So these guys could go any day now. So I'm keeping a close eye on them. And so I'll keep you guys updated as much as I can because I know a lot of people are excited and interested to hear what I'm going to have this year. Um, as always, this is the place to come to see the current status of my breeding trials and what babies are on the ground so far this year. Uh, so just stay tuned for future episodes and I'll keep you guys posted as much, I can, as, much as I can on my breeding progress. This guy is uh, getting a little... Uh, Testy. I think he wants to go back to his cage. Um, so anyway, I hope this was enjoyable and somewhat informative. As always, shoot me any questions you might have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.